In this tutorial, we're going to show how to use uh, catalogs with SIO Image DS9. Um, we start, um, and rather than load a file from the get go, we're going to restore a backup file um, that preloads the state of DS9 at some fixed point in time. Um, you can do a file uh, backup. Um, so here I've gone through and it's reloaded the event file and rebinned it to where I wanted it to be, and it's smoothed it and recentered it and everything else. Um, but that's not the point of this demo. Um, this demo is about catalogs, um, and you can go to the Analysis Catalogs tab and see a bunch of catalogs that are pre preloaded, pre-accessible, um, or you can search for your own. In this example, we're going to use the Chandra Source Catalog under the High Energy, and when you select it, it, it uh, queries the catalog um, back at SAO and uh, returns the uh, list of sources. Um, you can get some more information about the catalog by displaying the catalog header. Uh, every catalog is going to have different uh, metadata that goes and comes along with it. Um, this is the uh, the VO uh, table uh, uh, metadata that comes along with the catalog. Um, when you uh, see there's multiple columns here, um, there's a significance column. We can uh, decide to sort the table by significance. By default, it comes sorted. However, the uh, the service returns it. Uh, so now we've sorted in significance in decreasing order. Uh, if I now select the highest significance sort, you can see that it uh, appears and the source uh, symbol starts blinking. The second highest uh, significant source, and the third, um, and so on. Now I'd like to be able to come over here and, and you know select a source in the GUI, um, which you can do. You just have to go instead of being in pointer mode, you have to go to, to catalog mode. Now when you select a source in the GUI, um, the uh, source gets selected in the table. Um, and you can actually select multiple sources in the GUI and multiple rows in the table will get uh, will get highlighted. Um, you can go in and change the symbol uh, from you know a circle to a box or any of the other guys. And you can change the color, uh, but sometimes it's useful to be a little bit more advanced. You know these are sources and you know the symbols are points. They're not uh, they don't represent, for example, like the arrow circle. Uh, but we can do that. So if we go in and change the symbol to be a circle, um, and then the size of the radius, we're going to uh, set up an expression that is the error ellipse. And just to make things a little bit easier, uh, we're going to say five times the error ellipse, uh, just to make it a little bit bigger so you can kind of see it on the screen. And when you apply it, uh, you now see that you know all the symbols have now changed to circles, and all the circles have different sizes based on the uh, based on their errors, the positional errors. Um, we can be a little bit more fancy and use the if expression, um, where uh, we now want to say well now if we have highly significant sources, so sources uh, greater than. Uh, 10, significance greater than 10. Um, we want to keep those as white, which is what we just did. Now if I add a new condition and set up a new expression that is the significance is less than or equal to 10, um, we can now make those red. So these are our, our less, uh, less bright sources. Um, and then we don't have to go to the edit menu, we can t type directly into this box, so five times the error ellipse. Once you get the syntax down, um, it's easier just to type it directly and change the units. Um, and I just realized, oops, the, uh, the first one should be in uh, arc seconds, not in physical pixels. And, uh, you know, you play around, zoom in a little bit, and you can get something that looks like this.